Hello everybody and welcome to video number 21 of the online version of the Fusion Research Lecture. We are in chapter 4 and in the last video we talked about particles who are referred to as passing particles. Those are particles who are not trapped, who have a strong parallel velocity component and who are traveling around the torus. In this video we will talk about particles who have a significant perpendicular velocity and this might lead to trapping as we will see. So if we have particles whose parallel velocity is small compared to the or smaller than the uh, perpendicular velocity then the particles can actually be reflected. So the particles can be reflected when they are traveling in the torus because they can be reflected on their trajectory from the outboard side to the inboard side and what causes this reflection simply the gradient of the magnetic field because you know on the outboard side we have a lower magnetic field as compared to the inboard side so this is basically the same as a magnetic mirror where reflection can happen. And this has of course the or this has the result that no full poloidal turn <coughs> sorry is possible. So particles who are reflected they can no longer make a full poloidal turn. Now here's a, here, let's have a look at an example. So here you see uh, I will start a video now where you can see color coded the magnetic field strength in a typical tokamak and you will see now a simulation of a particle so this is just the equation of motion solved and you can see how the particle bounces around if it reaches regions of higher magnetic field now it's again lower magnetic field strength higher magnetic field strength lower magnetic field strength higher magnetic field strength and you see how the particle bounces around the tokamak yeah, so here even you see the gyro orbit is included in the solution something which we will usually not do but this is definitely possible and this is a rather old simulation which has been done years ago okay this was an example of a, a standard tokamak where the particle bounces around let's have a look at another video so once again, color coded the magnetic field strength. Blue means lower magnetic field strength, red higher magnetic field strength. You see the particle bouncing around between regions of higher magnetic field strength. It is reflected when the field strength is too high, assuming it has a significant perpendicular velocity. And now you see a cut through the experiment to visualize the trajectory as it might look from this perspective. Okay, now here you can see snapshots of the two simulations um, which I have just shown as a video and you might have seen that the duration of uh, the particles the, or the duration of their stay rather is longest at the reflection points is longest around the reflection points and that is simply because the parallel velocity decreases when they reach the deflection points more and more energy is transferred into the perpendicular velocity and since uh, the duration of this day is thus the longest there, the displacement is the strongest there. So they have the strongest displacement at the regions close to the re reflection, strongest displacement there. Okay, so now let's have a look at uh, the explanation for this um, deflection or for this uh, displacement. This is basically the same, so this is an equivalent, not the same, let's rather say an equivalent explanation as compared to the passing particles. So it's equivalent like the passing particles. Now, what does that mean? 
So let's make uh, a drawing where we have, uh, first we start with a coordinate system. So this is X and here we have the toroidal angle phi and here we have R. Then let's try to draw a flux surface. Maybe something like this. So a poloidal cross section. Here we have R naught. Um, magnetic field points, of course, into the board. What else is missing? We start with a positive charge located here. So there's a positive charge here. And since we have a positive charge, you remember the drift velocity for the ions is pointing upwards. Look at the video from or the last video to, to get a reminder on that. Now let's start with an ion which moves along the magnetic field line direction. Then here the ther sorry the theta, the poloidal velocity will oops sorry, will point downwards. So this is the poloidal velocity for a particle moving downwards. And if we follow that, same explanation as for the passing particles, the radii getting smaller due to the drift velocity pointing upwards, but then as compared or in a different, which is now different to the passing particles, since we do not have enough parallel velocity, but a strong perpendicular velocity, the particle will get reflected here. Then it moves upwards again, like this. Then it moves upwards again, and then it will again get reflected. And due to the drift velocity pointing upwards in the end, it will close its orbit. And we have such an orbit, which is called, due to its shape in the projection here, a banana orbit. So this is a banana orbit. And um, due to the, so here we have a poloidal projection, of course, a poloidal projection. As you have seen in the videos, the particle also moves in the toroidal direction, but due to the shape of the trajectory in the poloidal projection, we call these particles also banana particles. So we have banana orbits, banana particles. Oops. And this is what is also referred to as a trapped particle. This is a trapped particle. And usually a definition for a trapped particle is that the parallel velocity is zero somewhere on along its trajectory, somewhere along its trajectory. Now an important quantity is the width of this orbit. So this from here to here, right, roughly. This is referred to the width of the banana orbit, delta B A for banana. And since this is an important quantity for transport, because again, this allows the particle to deviate from its original flux surface, we will have a closer look at that. So important for transport processes is the width of the banana orbit. So this one is an important quantity. To estimate, to get an estimation of this width, what one has to do is compare the flux surface radii. So compare the flux surface radii at the outboard midplane, where we let our particle start at the outboard midplane, and in the reflection point and in the reflection point 
inserting this into the equation of motion, which we do not do here. And then one ends up with an expression for the banana width. which is approximately delta VA, which can be approximated by the poloid llama radius, which we had introduced yesterday, times epsilon, or, this is maybe more interesting here, we have the displacement of a particle, of a passing particle, and then times one over epsilon, and the square root, And this is maybe more, I said this is maybe more interesting because it tells us that the banana orbit is by a factor of 1 over the square root of epsilon larger than the drift plane displacement. The drift plane displacement. This is important to realize that the banana orbit is larger by a factor of 1 over the square root of epsilon than the drift plane displacement. So another uh, important quantity which we will use later is the reflection time. The reflection time, sometimes also referred to as bounce time. So it's an expression which you might read somewhere, bounce time which is the time it takes between two reflections. And that is expressed or can be expressed by, usually we use tau and then ba for banana. And then this is first we have two pi because tau is defined as one over omega usually. So we have two pi and then the width. Uh, so the, the distance over the drift velocity and then assuming an average angle since the particle is above the midplane and below the midplane moves around assuming an average angle then we get something like first inserting the expression for the banana width now also inserting the expression for the polar llama radius so fully inserting everything then we have mv parallel square root of epsilon over q b theta and then the drift velocity for an average angle as I said then we have q r b then over m v parallel squared and now having a close look at the equation we can see that this one cancels out this one cancels out square here goes away this one cancels out and we end up with an expression where we can insert now what we had used yesterday, the transit time for passing particles times one over the square root of epsilon. And again, we have an expression of the transit time for the banana particles, sorry, of the trapping time of the banana particles, which is larger by a factor of one over the square root of epsilon as compared to the passing time for the trapping particles. So let's write that down. So the banana particles take a factor of one over the square root of epsilon longer to complete their orbit, to complete their orbit than the passing particles, than the passing particles. Again, two important factors here, which I have written down here. Okay, finally, uh, this is all interesting, but maybe a few words about the fraction of trapped particles. So is this an important uh, effect or not? The fraction of trapped particles. So, as I said, the mechanism for reflection, this is basically a magnetic mirror. And a magnetic mirror 
in a magnetic mirror, particles are trapped if the sine, this is something which uh, you had learned in plasma physics 1, the sine of alpha or the squared of the sine of alpha, which is v parallel over v. If this is larger than some critical angle, often uh, referred to as alpha naught, which is the minimum magnetic field strength over the maximum magnetic field strength, and using now the expressions for the minimum magnetic field strength, which we had introduced at the beginning of this chapter, so B0, R0 over R0 plus R on the outward side, the magnetic field is the smallest, and the maximum magnetic field strength B0, R0 over, and now this is the magnetic field strength at the inboard side, the high field side, Inserting this now yields for the sine of alpha naught, then B naught and R naught cancel out, so it's R naught minus R, R naught plus R, and this can be written as we can get R naught out of the expression, meaning that we have here minus 1 minus small r over R naught. We do the same in the denominator, 1 minus r over r naught, and, well, of course, these cancel out, right? So this can, we can get rid of this, and then we can write this as 1 minus epsilon over 1 plus epsilon. And now one can integrate, one can perform an integration over a Maxwell-Boltzmann velocity distribution. So integrate over a Maxwell-Boltzmann velocity distribution in spherical coordinates, in spherical coordinates, using alpha naught as a boundary, because this defines the uh, trapping condition, and then we get a relative fraction of the banana particles. The banana particles, and just to be sure that this sticks to your mind, banana particles here means trapped particles. So we get a relative fraction of banana particles uh, with respect to the velocity distribution. With respect to the velocity distribution, we have Ft, the fraction of trapping particles, of trapped particles. Well, let's write it, yeah, let's write a small t, Ft, trapped particles. This can be approximated by 2 times epsilon and the square root of it. Okay, that's it for this video where we talk about trapping particles. So those are particles who have which have somewhere v parallel equal to zero along their orbit. This means, like in a magnetic mirror, they can be reflected. And since in a tokamak we have low magnetic field strengths on the outboard side, high magnetic field strengths on the inboard side, it simply can get reflection due to that gradient in the magnetic field. The shape of the particles in the pool oil trajection looks like a banana. This is why they are called banana particles. And their, the width of this orbit is larger than the corresponding displacement of passing particles. And also the bouncing time, the reflection time is longer by a factor of 1 over square root of epsilon than for the passing particles. And finally, we looked at the estimation for the fraction of trapped particles, which can be estimated by the square root of 2 times uh, epsilon. Yes, that's it for this video. Hope to see you in the next video.